So here we are, number 10. So we're given a nice cubic curve where y equals fx and fx equals 2 minus 2x minus 5 all squared times x plus 3. We are then given another expression y equals fx minus k. So when something is minus k outside the function, it means we're going to be dropping it down, assuming k is positive. So we're going to we know we're going to find a value down going downwards, and it passes through the origin. So we know that this curve cuts through here. So we can say that this shape is now like this, cutting through this point. Okay, so here we have to find k. We're also given another curve y equals f x plus c. And it has a minimum minimum point at the origin, so we know we have to shift this to the left, and then we find out that the turning point is over there. So again, this will cut through in some cases in the, um, the origin too. So what I do, let's have a crack. So what I would do, I would always have a graph. I would always sketch the graph. So here we are, having a quick sketch. We should have this. So we know it drops a bit so it dips, so this means the curve should be dipping over here. And again we just continue drawing it across. So now at this stage we can just call this graph y equals fx minus k. And the cool features about this one, because we know it cuts through the origin, we can just say it cuts through 0, 0. So replacing this with 0 we should have 0 equals f0 minus k. And we know what the function of fx is, don't we? It's given in the question. fx, if you recall, is just simply this. 2x minus 5 squared times x plus 3. Okay. So now at this stage, what happens? Okay. So, replacing x with 0, so we're going to have 0 equals. This, replace x with 0, we're going to have minus 5 squared times plus 3 so we're going to have minus 5 squared times 3 minus k evaluating this one so this is going to give us if minus 5 squared is plus 25 25 times 3 is 75 and hence 75 equals minus k so of course easily this is k equals 75 we are part 2 so now we need to sketch this curve. So we, we already know from the original equation that we got y equals fx, and now we know we're going to make a shift of c to the left. And this, of course, has a minimum point at origin. So this, in other words, the turning points here should one of them should have a minimum point. Of course, it has to be this one because it's the lowest one, and has to be over, has to be bending over here. So sketching it carefully should look something like like this and it bends over here good so this is one turning point and this is another turning point this would probably be called the maximum point this would be the minimum point so we know because it's at the origin we can replace x y with zero zero so you know at zero zero we therefore have zero equals f c so these are now zero we know what fc is, it's pretty much fx at point c. So 0 equals an equation now is going to be 2c minus 5 squared bracket c plus 3. Solving this would give us c equals 5 over 2 and c equals negative 3. Voila. And of course negative 3 is this one, 5 over 2 would be here. Hence, the value we need is c equals 5 over 2 which represents the minimum okay now let's move on to part b he's asking us to show that f prime x equals this in other words the first derivative of our function must equal this not so bad really it's just a case of expanding this properly so let's have a shot let's the, the majority marks expanding this and differentiating is the easy part so by expanding this what do we get well i always do the, um, the the larger term first, in other words, to focus on one bracket, two brackets, and then do the next one. So because this is squared, this is straightforward. So let's expand the square. So we're going to have 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 5, and then minus 5 times 2x will give us 
minus 20x or minus 10x or minus 10x. Lastly, minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25. And we can wrap this firmly around x plus 3. Now I'm going to show you a cool trick when it comes to summarizing cubic equations. Okay, try to line them up by coefficients of x's here. I'll show what I mean here. So first let's expand it. So 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. 4x squared times 3 is plus 12x squared. And then lastly, minus 20x times x is minus 20x squared. Minus 20x plus times plus 3 is minus 60. And now 25 times x is plus 25x. Don't forget x is here. I could have made a mistake. <laughs> and 25 times 3 is plus 75. As you see, it's all laid down nicely by x's and by coefficients. Now all we want to do is pretty much sum these up. Okay. So summing all these up because that's what we do. 4x cubed is of course 4x cubed. 12x squared minus 20 will give us minus. Oh, let me just double check this one. Yep, will give us minus 8x squared. 25 take away 60 is minus 35x, and of course we've got nice plus 75. Alright, so where are we now? So now we just have to differentiate this equation. Remember this equals that. So taking the first derivative of this one, I think we can see we'll get it. So therefore, the first derivative equals, so, so in other words, to differentiate this, drop the powers down. So drop the power 3, and now 4 times 3 is 12x squared. And it's getting so blurry, isn't it? It shouldn't be like that. And then drop, then you've got minus, drop the power 2, and 8 times 2 is 16x. And of course, differentiate minus 35 is here, minus 35. Plus 75 disappears, and voila. Here is the answer to part B. Let's move on to part 10C. So we know that given that A and B are distinct points that lie on the curve y equals fx, so we've got two points, both real. Not, so there's not too much to worry about. The second statement is important. The gradient of y of y equals fx, the curve at A is equal to the gradient of the curve at B. From the statement alone, we need to deduce that the gradient for, let's say, at point A is equal to the gradient at point B. And just recall that the gradient comes from the, the first derivative of the, of the curve itself. So we're going to stick with this function here. Okay, so this will probably be key to give us what we need. Okay, so this is, of course, the gradient equation. We also know that given that the, at A has x coordinate 3, find x coordinate B. Okay, so literally we know that because these two have the same gradient, put into this equation we should have a pair of solutions that satisfy one of them giving us a solution of 3 and another one giving us a solution of b. Quite straightforward, I think. So replacing the gradient equation with the value of x equals 3, what should we get? And of course, this is the gradient itself. So what happens here? When x equals 3, we can use the gradient of ma which is 12 times 3 squared minus 16 times 3 minus 35. So evaluating this, what do we get here? 12 times, so this is 9, so 12 times 9 here will give us 108 minus 16 times 3 is 48 minus 35. So now our quick mental math skills, 108 take away 48 should be 60. 60 take away 35 is 25. And voila, here's our gradient. Hmm, not bad, is it? So, what do we do here now? So now that we've got a gradient here, what we could do is find a gradient, find the uh, x corner b. And to do that, we have to plug this back into the equation and solve this quadratic. So to find the x coordinates now again, plugging this into the gradient expression, we're going to have 25 equals 12x squared minus 16x minus 35. So the logic behind this is that when you solve this expression, we get 2x squared and 1, that will give you a solution of 3, and other one will give you a solution of b. Subtracting 25 will give us 
12, 12x squared minus 16x. But minus 35 take away 25 is minus 60. Now, factorize this, but before you factorize, let's try and simplify this. We know that they all go into the, the, the 4, so we can divide the whole thing by 4. So dividing by 4, we should have uh, 3x squared minus 4x minus 50. Not bad. Now it's just a case of factorizing it properly. We've got 3x squared, so we know one's going to be 3x and x. To get 15, we know because one solution is 3, my money is at 3 is over here. So 3 and I know 3 and 5 make 15. So putting 3 here and 5, we can see that 3x times 3 is 9x. So we can do minus 9x plus 5x to give us a minus what? So minus 9x. We need a solution of 3. Of course, this must be plus. And hence, looking at this, we know we've got our x coordinate here, our a co uh, x coordinate for a, and then our x coordinate for b is therefore minus 5 over 3. Easy guys, easy guys. So I hope this helps and um, let me know in the comments or anything if you have any more questions. I'll be doing a C2 paper too. So see you all for now. Ciao.